Welcome to Meaningful Mornings. Our semester began on September 10th. Today, we complete 75 mornings or days in this semester. And more epically, today, we complete 75 weeks of mornings and days together. There's some people who join us for Meaningful Mornings who are not even 75 weeks old. <laughs> and that is the breadth and depth of our relationship, <coughs> of our community. I'm going to read to you <coughs> a paragraph from Puja Swami Chinmayananda's commentary to keep on orienting us towards this special portion of Bhagavad Gita. You will be noticing that during these stanzas, Krishna is enumerating 12 different types of yajnas, each one a ritualism conducted only in our mind. And that too, during our day-to-day -day <laughs> existence. In short, these passages give us different patterns of life, wherein by the necessary adjustments in the mind, we can change effectively the entire reactions of the world upon us. In summary, whenever we think of a yajna, we externalize this. The offerer, the offering, the offered, we have no relationship with this. And what Pujaswami Chinmayananda is writing to all of us, the offerer, the offering, the offered is all within us. We have every facet of a yajna in our jurisdiction, in our control. And so there are no excuses to not live by karma yoga. I've repeatedly shared each chapter magnifies karma yoga. One time, that's chapter two. Ten times, that's chapter three. Now in chapter four, it's a hundred times. To hold on to that yoga. And please remember, especially for those who are used to externalizing and rituals. Who's teaching all of this? Not Vivek, not Puja Swami Chinmayananda. These are Sri Krishna's direct words. Who are we to invalidate them? Around eight months ago, I facilitated a workshop organized by Chinmay Mission Portland with the theme of integrating Gita. In my travels, in my associations with seekers, I've observed that some have a static relationship with Bhagavad Gita. They own the book, they chant verses, but again, there's no relationship. In this workshop, my aspiration was to make their relationship with Bhagavad Gita dynamic. And a way to do this is to give a name and a form to these teachings. Just like 
How many of you have named your car? <laughs> really? You haven't? Okay. How many of you have named your home? Okay. You all need to personalize <laughs> these facets of your life more. You have a name and form, correct? So with each of these yagnas, I offered a name and a form to these yagnas. I'm repeating, I offered it. This is not shared by Sri Krishna. This is Vivek's efforts to make this relationship dynamic. So, the first yajna, the name that I offered was Drishti Yajna. And the form, this is your practice, check in. Check in. For those who are flying in the coming days, you are constantly checking your flight for weather, for people working on the plane, correct? Because if that flight <laughs> is not going to go, what's the point of anything else you're planning? So this drishti yajna, we should regularly, perpetually check in as we're going about living. Am I feeling that the offer is infinite? The offering is infinite. The offer it is infinite. Number two. I entitled Deva Yagna. This is where the sense objects is the offering and the sense organs are the offered to. And the practice, delay screens. Delay screens. When you wake up, delay the amount of time before you look at a screen other than meaningful morning. This is your naimittika karma, special responsibility. <laughs> Delay screens. That's how you practice deva yajna. Number three, brahma yajna. This is brahma with the short A, like brahman. Brahma yajna. And this is where the ego is offered to presence. And the form for the practice is bow down. Each of these practices will only be two words. Bow down. Every time you see one who is wiser than you, and wiser in a sacred way, it does not matter in a secular way. So if you see an icon of, of God, or you come across a verse from Bhagavad Gita, bow down externally. And if you can't do that, suppose you're driving. Bow down internally. Number four, Indriya Yajna. In brackets, Samyama. The next series of verses and Yajnas are all about Samyama or discipline. For the sake of your organization, Indriya Yajna. <coughs> this is where the sense organs are offered to discipline. Sense organs to discipline. And your form or practice is save energy. Save energy. And I mean this externally. Turn lights off if you're not in the room. Close your computer, etc. If you get into the practice of saving external energy, you'll get into the practice of saving internal energy. I repeat, these are not Sri Krishna's practices. There is no electricity during the Mahabharata. Okay, so don't go meet Puja Swami Tejavain and then said, we love your teachings. You said, Sri Krishna said, save energy. He did not. <laughs> I'm only trying to make this dynamic. Before we get into the next verse and the next yajna, I want to remind you of how Sri Krishna is encouraging discipline. Please share in the chat. What is Deva Yajna again? Sense objects into sense organs. Everyone's acknowledging that. But then shortly after, Sri Krishna teaches Indriya Yajna. 
it's no longer about the sense objects into the sense organs. Now it's the sense organs themselves into discipline. See how that's more comprehensive. That requires more application. That same teaching is now offered in the 27th verse. And this will be our fifth yajna. Sarvani Nriya Karmani Prana Karmani Chapare Atma Samyama Yoga Gnau Juhwati Jnana Deepite Sarvani means all. All what? Indriya. That is our sense organs, but specifically what is now included is the karma indriyas or the organs of action. Not only that, prana karmani cha apare and others also include the physiological functions or the pranas. Shared simply. The indriya yagna was offering your organs of knowledge into discipline. Please acknowledge that. Now, it is not just your organs of knowledge, but it's your organs of action too. All of your organs that input and all of your organs that output. More comprehensive, yes? More demanding. And so, <laughs> this yajna is called Atma Yajna, according to Vivek. Atma Yajna. Before it was Indriyas, now Atma, because I'm not just what I input, I'm very much about what I output too. Just think of meaningful mornings. I'm outputting right now. I'm known for meaningful mornings, that's an example. Known poorly, but still known. <laughs> And that's accentuated in the third quarter. Atma samyama yoga agna. The organs of perception and response are offered into the fire of discipline. This fire, juhwati jnana dipite, this fire that received this, receives this sacrifice has been kindled has been lit up by jnana, or knowledge. Let me elaborate. The jnana dipite, which means the light of knowledge, this is the why facet of a yajna. We have the offer, offering offered, but the why is really the most important part of a yajna, of karma yoga. And so what it implies for us is while we are doing, we should start to reflect. While doing, also reflect. More evolved than that, while you're doing, what should you be doing? or feeling, observing. And the completion of, while you're doing, what should you be feeling? Being. Remember we went through those verses, verses 16, 17, 18, that described karma. And I told everyone, we should have this feeling of being while doing. How do I build up to that? While I'm doing, be reflective. Why am I doing this? Keep asking yourself, am I going to evolve through this action? Then deepen that to observing. I am simply an instrument, but there is a master who's facilitating all of this. And then you deepen that more to being. And once you're being, what will be on your face? 
<laughs> you all start meaningful mornings like this, but once the teachings come, <laughs> when we are being, we will be joyous. That's the Jnana Deepite. One more insight for all of you. When you start to practice reflecting, observing, being, you are shifting the offer. Who is the offer right now for every yajna? The ego. The ego has this sense of doing and deserving. But when you get into reflecting, observing, being, that's the same as becoming more egoless. Becoming enlightened. These verses are seeds for chapter six. I already highlighted for all of you the seeds for chapter five. I stated two of the best verses in Bhagavad Gita that are in chapter five. These verses are seeds for chapter six. It is only when you're practicing constantly, and that's what these yagnas are enabling us to do, that you will be ready for contemplation or dhyana. Please do not take these yagnas lightly. Do not take them intellectually. Like now I know these and I can draw them. These are all fine ways for us to practice. And the practice for the fifth yajna is talk less. <laughs> You're all thinking to me at eight o'clock, we wish you talked less. <laughs> because our mouth is not only an organ of knowledge, it's an organ of action, correct? I taste and talk with this unit. So that is your practice, talk less. This is how Atma Yajna can be lived. From inspiration to application, your application yesterday was that tacky saying that I saw on a chart in India, rarely do we regret under eating. I observed that many of us, including Vivek, we use our senses like we're never going to be able to use them again. We eat like this is the last time I'm ever going to have a donut <laughs> or a scoop of ice cream or watch TV. And I just use these organs so much for that. We're rarely in such an experience. When you use your sense organs, you should use them in a way where you feel more energized. Don't we all feel that after we exercise? We're using our sense organs, but I feel I have more energy. And if not that, at least the sense organs, when used, should feel relaxed. When you're completely relaxed, what do you do? You finally sleep. That means you don't use your sense organs. But if you're using your sense organs where you want more and more and more of that object, then we're not living by yajna. Your application for this morning Chapter 4, verse 28, is a powerful verse with five yajnas. So I want you to summarize this verse in advance. I want you to visualize that tomorrow, we're going to randomly spotlight you, unmute you, and you have to speak on this verse. Some of you are having heart palpitations. We will not do that. The credibility of meaningful mornings will go down, up, down, down, up. <laughs> but I want you to feel that that may happen. That's the level of summarization I want you to engage in. Shanti, shanti, shanti. Be safe, be sound, be serene, be happiness.